What is it like to travel as a tourist through a major metropolis like Istanbul? With approximately 60 million people and many different transport options. I'm curious about the outcome and I will discuss this with one of the key policy makers in the city of Istanbul. I'm going to experience in practice what mobility is really like in the city through the eyes of the traveler. Hi, my name is Geert Klopmer. I'm an international mobility expert. On the internet, I already read that the price of the metro is much cheaper than the taxi. And the traveling time with the metro will probably be a lot less than with a taxi. But how do I get the right ticket for the metro? And where is the entrance to the metro? And which metro station should I get on? And where should I get out? The entrance to the metro station is really very easy to find at the airport. Just getting the Istanbul card from the ticket machine is and remains a real hassle. Now you see, easy as it. I'm in Istanbul, I follow this route. It's just five minutes walk. I have to go up here. Come on, let's go. Today I'm going to visit the historic center of Istanbul and I am curious what I'm going to bump into if I use both metros funicular to see all the different parts of Istanbul. Follow me. I'm here in the Kadikoy district on the Asian side of the Bosphorus. I usually choose an Airbnb outside the tourist center of a city because it's often so overcrowded and does not give a realistic picture of what a city is actually like. I'm looking for a place just further away where more students and locals live but still have good connections by boat, metro, bus or bicycles to other parts of Istanbul. Yesterday I got from the airport towards the, my Airbnb and it was really easy. I just got down into the metro line. It was very cheap and it was quick. I was nervous in the plane because I thought, oh, can I get there easily? And to be quite honest, I got the Istanbul card. I got on the metro and I just walked and went up. So it was more easy than all the stress I had in the plane getting to my local destination in this beautiful city of Istanbul. I can take many different boats to get almost everywhere and I can use my Istanbul card on the boats. It's actually integrated in their public transport system. Now we are arriving at the pier of Kadikoy and we're going to meet with somebody from the municipality and we're going to talk about how they can make the public transport system more accessible for tourists. As a preparation, I read on the internet about the project that would make 15 streets car-free in the historic center of Istanbul and give priority to pedestrians. Melda Horst has been working in the municipality of Istanbul for 20 years. She was a deputy director responsible for high-skill transportation planning issues such as sustainable urban mobility plan. How did you pedestrianize nearly 15 streets at your historic peninsula center? Biz aslında sürdürülebilir ulaşım vizyonuyla artık İstanbul'u ulaşım planlamasını araç Ee, ulaşımı için değil, insan hareketliliği için yapıyoruz. Yaya hareketliliği bizim için çok önemli. Bunu yaparken dikkat ettiğimiz en önemli husus aslında yayalaştırmanın dokunacağı bölgedeki e, tüm paydaşları ve tüm paydaşlarla birlikte hareket etmek. Sürdürülebilir ulaşım vizyonuyla hareket ediyoruz. 
Artık İstanbul'un ulaşımını e, araçların ulaşımı için değil, yayaların hareketliliği için gerçekleştiriyorum. Logistics, what was the main thing you changed in the peninsula uh, to change the logistics? What was the old situation? What is the thing you changed in the logistics? Artık tarihi yarımada içerisinde lojistik araçların yönetimiyle ilgili uygulamalarımız var. Ee, örneğin tarihi yarımada içinde Laleli bölgesinde tırların, otobüslerin girdiği e, bir otogar alanı mevcuttur. Biz şimdi tarihi yarımada dışında Ali Beyköy bölgesine bu lojistik alanı taşımak istiyoruz. Uh, how can you make the ferry system more accessible to tourist, tourists like me? Ee, İstanbul'da 37 tane deniz hattı var. Bunların dördü turistler için turlarla e, ilgili, diğerleri kamu için kullanılıyor. What is the the next steps? Everybody always wants to improve something. Like what is your main next step to make the public transportation system more accessible towards tourists? En önemli konu toplu ulaşımı algılamanın kolaylaştırılması. Bunun için yön bulma sistemi geliştirmeye çalışıyoruz. Bu sistemi geliştirirken e, yayaların, turistlerin kenti algılamasına yardım edecek bilgilendirme tabelalarını e, standart bir şekilde kentin, turistlerin yoğun olduğu bölgelere, özellikle de ulaşım modlarının kesiştiği alanlara kurgulamak istiyoruz. Ben şey sormak istiyorum, toplu ulaşım modları içerisinde deniz, e, otobüs, raylı sistem hangisinde entegrasyonu daha çok geliştirmemiz gerekiyor? Well, I think the biggest improvement here you can make is showing the amount of ferries and possibilities with all the stations you have to show the lines to tourists that you can actually access this very cheap ferry system which is run very frequently but you can don't all have to go to the peninsula but you can also go to another palace and then take a sharing bike system and cycle so giving the information about the whole line system of your ferry that is the main thing I think for not only the tourists, but also for the people living in Istanbul. Thank you very much and you would say teşekkürler. <laughs> teşekkürler, bir şey değil. The boat trip was really relaxed. We I could have a coffee on the boat. It goes really frequent and it's cheap. And you've got such a nice view of the city. It's just absolutely magic to see the city from the boat. This is one of the nicest and oldest stations I've seen for a very, very long time. It was made at the end of the 19th century already by a French guy who said all the people had to climb up all the time here. We have to make something new and then they built this and I think it's spectacular. I was actually surprised that still so many local people take this thing every day. Elderly people and it runs so frequently. So, that's a lot of steps and I understand that the elderly people, that they take up the vinicular. Now I'm back at Carigue.
This is what you see if you get people out and in all the time. If you haven't got enough space for pedestrians and you're getting off a tram here and they're coming so frequently also with buses. And so you haven't got a chance here to walk and people start to walk on the pavement here and it's really dangerous. Well, you see the people turning right here and now we have to cross here with so many and here the bus is coming. This situation with bus and bus and bus coming with so many people here and a tram system that's unloading masses of people going to the ferry here. Come on. Uh, the best view is from here. You see so many trams coming up and down here and they are unloading so many people and they have to go on these very, very small areas where you have to pass. That is something which really needs to be changed quickly because you also have to get onto the boat on that side. So changing this difficult, very difficult infrastructure near, near to a bridge, that is crucial for the next steps to make it safer for tourists, but also for people living here. The design of where they put the stop is not right. They should get the stop in more here and then have a free walk way to walk immediately. So now you're solving it by doing a tunnel there. Instead of moving your main point where the tram stop is, move the pedestrian area from there also to there so you make it a lot safer for people using the public transport and certainly the elderly people. I prefer it sometimes towards the metro for tourists because you can still see the city and you're not 100 meters below and it's dark and here you can still you got the feeling as a tourist that you're still connected towards the city and you can go to other places a little bit further out out of the peninsula and the really busy part and meet some local people that's what i like from using trams i'm a little bit tired because i went and doing many different things in istanbul seeing it from the sea seeing it uh, walking and also just catching a tram yeah it was really good fun my main problem in as a pedestrian was actually finding my way uh, and it's not only finding my way because google helps me with finding my way but at a lot of places i got out of the boat or i was changing from the tram towards walking then i did not feel safe at all because I did not know where to go. I had to go through a lot of traffic getting to the right place. A pro on the pedestrian side, I thought was coming out of the vinicular and then suddenly I was in an area which was totally car free. I had the same experience when I was walking through the old uh, historic center where they had 15 streets made car free. And suddenly there I felt totally relaxed and I could enjoy the city even better. A big pro of the boats is definitely that you can see the city in such a nice way. You have coffee and it's relaxed. Also, you can take your bike on the ferry and then you can cycle along the sea. So the combination of with a boat getting further out, further out of the normal touristy places and then combining it with cycling i thought that was absolutely magic here one of the biggest pros today was certainly the istanbul car that gave me access towards bus metro uh, ferries almost everything it's really cheap all the different transportations and it's running so often and so frequent it's you don't even have to look at timetables the big con is that you don't see half of the potential of the lines of all the different ferries and also all the opportunities that are there for minibuses and dormuses they are not visible so one of the most important things to improve is having maps that showing the integrated options that this public transport system has got 
because you're missing out on almost 30 to 40 percent because you don't see the options. So ending this whole day, it was a pleasure to travel through Istanbul and uh, I would recommend everybody to see this city and use these different kinds of modes of public transport. Uh, thanks for viewing this and I hope it inspires you to come here one day and do it yourself. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.